In Service to Love, the relationship podcast that helps you create more love in the practical day-to-day, centering connection in the life of the modern family with your host, therapist, mother, and artist, Randee Dorn. Hi, (laughs) Merry Christmas (laughs) to anyone who is listening to this, I guess the week of Christmas or happy holidays to anyone who doesn't really celebrate that. Uh, Although this episode might concentrate a little bit on um, the topic of of Christmas. And uh, the reason why I wanted to do this particular episode is that, uh, and what is this episode? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Hello, everyone. This episode is a little bit on um, on faith and on grief. And why do I want to talk about grief <laughs> or even faith? And I, I think because the, the core of this particular message is that grief grows our faith. Loss, right? The, 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 tragedy of losing something that is incredibly important to us. And this goes, when I say faith, that goes across um, different genres, meaning whatever your um, your faith or belief, uh, it could be around source or spirit. And mostly I'm going to use the, the word um, spirit here and, and the idea of being in connection to spirit. But this is also, um, I think, a, a little bit of a part two in terms of my conversation um, with my brother that I had a couple episodes ago, and I really encourage you, if you haven't listened to it, to go back and listen to it. Uh, I think there's a lot of juicy information in there. It also can be quite challenging to people, and I think that's good, right, for us to allow ourselves to continue to be in uh, in our curiosity and to continue to interface with things sometimes that that uh, make us question and make us think. And so I, I wanted to do this um, this episode um, to give a, a, maybe a little bit more of my walk with this um, because I what I loved about talking with uh, talking to my brother is that he is so um, clear and steadfast in his, belief. And I will say at the root of my life, there is a lot of faith. There's a lot of belief. And I would say within the dynamic of the two of us, I'm the one that likes to explore in a lot of different ways. He actually explores a lot too. So I think that's why he's he's gotten to the place that, that he's at. But uh, I'm going to be transparent as someone who has a lot of faith and who has a, a, a long history specifically with, with uh, God and with Christianity. It's kind of all I've known. Uh, I was brought up in the church by my mom. Interesting enough, I had a female pastor. Our family had a female pastor my whole life until I became an adult um, and moved out to the valley here in Los Angeles and found a new church. But up to that point, I, and a black female pastor at that. So I, I've always had a lot of strong black women in my life um, who really were iconic and instrumental in me becoming the person that I am. And at the same time, I've done a lot of exploring around um, maybe other kind of mystic ideas or even, you know, as maybe as I don't want to be in invalidating or inconsequential, but um, more accessible uh, like um, meditation or yoga or crystals, like I mentioned before, Um, you know, I've done uh, pleasure practices. Uh, I mentioned, um, I have a conversation with my, two of my best friends that I'll be coming up soon. And, you know, we mentioned, you know, uh, exploring Mama Gina and those practices, if you've heard of her. And I I do that type of exploration because uh, for me, I'm trying to find where I fit. And as much as um, my faith is really the foundation of what love looks like for me. 
I'm trying to understand where my body fits in. I'm trying to, to sometimes understand where my culture fits in. I'm also trying to explore um, my interests around uh, being a woman, around femininity, around beauty. And so I, I wanted to say all that um, to say that for me, uh, there's a lot of kind of like opening and closing flexibility and expansion and sometimes contraction uh, in in my in my walk, right, to understand what faith looks like. And so I, I wanted to just bring up three different points uh, today as I share a little bit of, of what that, that, maybe it's a duality, but what that looks like in terms of how grief has showed up for me and how faith has showed up for me in the same time. And again, that, with that thesis of, of grief can grow our faith. So the first story um, for me where I felt really, really challenged and really hit uh, was in the loss of my mom who died almost 10 years ago. She died of cancer. Um, I'm very grateful that she died at home so that we could be with her, so that we could say our goodbyes. I will say that my relationship with my mom was um, incredibly strong. I'm, I'm, it was a big loss for me because she was such a big influence in my life. She was someone who was watching my kids at the time because my, my ex-husband was, was still going to, he had gone back to graduate school. So I was seeing her a couple of times a week while she was helping while I was working. Uh, and even before that, I was talking to her a couple of times a week. I find, found my mom incredibly funny and cool and smart and just was a huge uh, rock for me. So when she died, I was angry. I was really angry. And, and I was angry because I... I didn't understand, and maybe that isn't something to be understood, but I didn't understand why she had to leave. I didn't understand um, why she died. And partly because I was really looking for, and maybe I was believing this idea that if you were good, bad things didn't happen, right? My mom um, always lived her life in faith. She was incredibly generous kind, really um, sacrificed herself a lot to help other people, including her children, um, was just like deeply warm, deeply loving. And so I was pissed off, right? I I'm not the only one who's lost someone. <laughs> and I'm not the only one who's lost someone who was amazing. And I felt incredibly entitled to be pissed off. And I would, I lived out in the Valley at the time, and I think my kids were three and four. And I would just take myself around Lake Balboa out here and I would walk and I would curse. I would curse God often. And I would challenge, I would challenge him. It's like, well, my mom was amazing and you took her. And so now everything that I based my life off of doesn't make any sense anymore. So I don't have to be good. And when I say I was good, right? I was like someone with like good credit score. I, you know, you know, kind of married the first person. This is very vulnerable, but really the first person that, that I, that I slept with my husband was my one and only at the time. And, you know, and then even having sex before marriage, I did, but it was a big, big, big deal to me. It was a big challenge. And I'm, I'm sharing that because I really tried to do it all right. You marry that person, you're together. We were together for, for 20 years before we separated. Uh, we got the house, then you got the two kids, and then and you went to college. And I, I mean, so, you know, if my mom was amazing, I really tried to walk in her footsteps of being righteous and amazing. And so my world, my understanding of the world blew up with her death. And so not only was I pissed off, I was like, all right, all the rules are gone. I'm just going to be an ass. And I'll, I mean, you know, I wasn't belligerent. People knew me through that time, <laughs> but I threatened God that I was going to be 
belligerent, right? I I threatened to do whatever I wanted and to throw caution to the wind because, you know, how dare you? Honestly, how dare you is how I felt. And I share that to say that part of what strengthened my faith was that I did say, how dare you? And I did say, you know, F you. And I did say, okay, well, let's see if you can love me in this this version of me. Let's see if you can love. And I still was going to church, to be honest. I think partly I found, went back to church and found church um, because I was still secretly looking for that relationship. And I was still yelling at him because I had a relationship, because I believed in him, in him enough to yell at him, to be pissed off. And so there were moments when I was grateful that I had my mom to begin with. Uh, there was moments when I was grateful that I had my children. There was moments when I was grateful that I at least got to say goodbye. And uh, I'll also share, when my mom died, I had no regrets. There was nothing. I mean, you know, obviously I've spoken before. There's questions I probably could ask. But I never not knew my mom loved me. And so there weren't any words that need to be said between the two of us. I was grateful for that. And I was mad that I didn't have more time with someone like that. And so uh, I share some of this kind of point one that like in your, in your walk of trust with your belief system, you should be able to challenge that belief system. You should be able to challenge that relationship, just like we challenge relationships with the other intimate people in our life. I believe that our relationship with spirit is one that we are here to grow. And how do we grow it if it's not challenged, right? If the relationship itself isn't put to a particular test. So I tested it. I was like, look, take take it all. Now, of course, even as I say that in my mind, I'm like, please don't take my children. Please don't take my best friend, <laughs> right? But, you know, it's like, as I say that, of course, I was also bracing that, more bad things weren't going to happen. And, and you know, to the credit of, of my faith, of God, bad things didn't happen, right? I mean, that was the, the worst of the things at the time. Did other bad things happen in my life? Of course, right? Did other things happen to people in my family? Of course, part of that is just life, right? And again, there is... Like grief is there, one, to show us the importance of life, the value of the time that we have here, the value of our relationships. And one of those relationships is with your faith, right? It's with your belief system. And here is where I think, you know, kind of going back to the idea of, of the pandemic, it's like if your belief system couldn't hold you in that space, that's something for you to consider. And I think part of why the pandemic was so challenging is because for some of us, our belief was only in ourselves. And that's why I keep referencing this idea of whatever spirit means to you, to have something to latch on to where you're not the only one, the only thing responsible for what's happening you know, in your life, meaning that you don't always feel completely alone. And we're responsible for our choices, but I, I really encourage you to activate this idea that I'm not alone in this, that there is hopefully something for me to hold on to, whatever that means for you. It doesn't have to be what I believe in. Please know that, that, that this journey is about you making choices that that really resonate and make sense to you. And whatever that is, 
it needs to be challenged. The relationship needs to grow in that tension, right? That's how we deepen our relationship when we are challenged. In those moments when you're in partnership and you have a child, that is challenging. That is going to deepen your relationship with your partner. And hopefully in that tension, in that challenge, it'll deepen your relationship with the child that the two of you just had together. It's amazing. However that child came into your life, right? And so the the... The second thing about this is that the your belief or your faith grows in the gap, the gap between what is known and what is unknown. So the second thing, and I'll I'll, I'll tie this in with my my mom too. The second major thing that happened, probably I guess about seven years later, maybe less is I, I have talked about this before, is that my marriage ended. And it was amicable, you know, it was, and there was a lot of really good reasons why it, it needed to end. But again, the, here I was. <laughs> I, I'm laughing because, uh, you know, I walked a lot <laughs> around that lake. And, um I had a lot of, again, a lot of words around that because a part of my relationship to marriage was that it was forever. Part of my relationship was that I, you know, you do whatever it takes to make it work. Part of my relationship was that I didn't have a marriage in my home. I grew up with a single mom. And so it was, it was really important to me to change that paradigm, to have a two parent household with the kids, because I grew up not having a strong relationship with my dad, even though he literally only lived like 10 minutes away from my house. And so I had such a strong will and desire for my marriage to look a particular way and for it to be, again, kind of quote unquote, perfect for me to do all the right things. I had a very kind of traditional setup, even though I worked, I wasn't, I was working part-time. I knew my responsibility was towards the children and my ex was the provider. And when the children came, even though I, we were both artists, I stepped back from my art making to commit to raising my kids. And again, partly because I, I grew up with a single mom who was, who was incredible, but was also working. And I felt the, the loss of, loss is probably not the right word, but I, I just felt the, the, the tension between um, her availability for me and what I really desired from her. So I, I wanted to give my children and myself actually the opportunity to, to parent in a very uh, particular way and to be very available to them. And so I, I chose a husband who would allow for me to do that, you know, and, and he did to the best of his abilities. And so when we got to that place where we both decided, okay, there, this isn't working in the way that, that we, um, which in a way that would serve both of us that we uh, lovingly chose to go our, our separate ways, there was that gap, right? There's the gap of my, of being married and not being married, the, of the known and unknown. And then there was a gap of, my mom was supposed to live forever. Like she, I like was so convinced this woman was so strong and robust and grounded. It was like, you know, she was like an oak tree. Why would she not be? around for the rest of my life. So these two pillars of stability in my life were, were I feel like taken from me, right? Were taken, just, just felt like they were taken. <laughs> I will use that word. <laughs> I will own that experience. Cause there's a, there's a part of me that even wants to wrestle with that word. And I'm, I'm not going to wrestle here. I'm going to be vulnerable and, and say that it felt like it was, those things were taken from me. So here I was in this place of, of stepping into like navigating this while I was grieving the loss of it. 
And again, like kind of like railing at the sky, you know, railing at my faith, you know, as to, again, how dare you? (laughs) I'm the one of the good ones. And I think I needed to know and learn that now that I'm on in a different place in my life to be able to appreciate the fact that I don't have to be good. I mean, I think that was part of my challenge is that, oh, I don't have to be good. I don't have to be perfect to receive this love and care. And that me being good and perfect doesn't save me from life being life. And in some ways, there's a freedom in finally receiving that message that there isn't like something, there's this thing that I need to do necessarily. Like there's this way that I need to be. And if I, and if I, and if I'm perfectly that thing, then I can cocoon myself from the world. If I'm, if I'm perfectly that thing, then nothing bad will ever happen to me. And in some ways, the bad things happening to me allow for me to relax and surrender, one, into my grief, but into the freedom that came out of that. One of those things of freedom was my freedom to create a new, more organic or loving or deeper relationship with spirit. That I thought, oh, this is about, this is about you and me. This is about me then saying, well, how do I really want to show up in the world if being perfect isn't what I have to do anymore? So does that mean I get to go play in the rain? Does it mean that I get to go dance half naked at a Mama Gina event? Does this mean, and the answer is yes. (laughs) Yes, I get to. And, you know, I'm sure there's consequences to some of that, but I also got to have a yes, yes, and yes, and experience whatever consequences come from that. Do I get to start over? Yes. I was I was talking to to um a client recently who is contemplating um separation and contemplating divorce and wanting to in our conversation kind of grip and hold on to the things that are currently in their life. And part of this conversation and this is a, a faith-based uh client was saying, no, you have to have this conversation with spirit. You have to be willing to let things go. And I said, you also have a, you know, a lack of imagination right now. And that you're actually living in this place of lack as if this is the only reality that you can live in. Like, what if what is for you is, is, bigger and better and and more loving, more hell for all the people who would be impacted by this change. Because spirit doesn't have a lack of imagination. It is us. It it is our those moments when myself included, when I'm like life cannot cannot exist without my mom in it. Life cannot exist without my marriage in it. Well, clearly, clearly it does. I had a lack of imagination. And for good reason. Who wants to imagine that? That's just silly. I'm not sitting around thinking about what, I mean, we do. What if, what if, what if? But not seriously. Not as much as hopefully many of us sit around thinking about, oh, what it could, what life could be. What it, what it could be about. What, what. The, all the beauty and and opportunities that can come, those thoughts still exist in our grief. What does it mean that my mom died? What does that give me? 
So as I'm mourning and as I'm getting angry, my anger is part of me kind of breaking out of what I thought things were supposed to be. It it allowed me to step into a new version of this woman. It allowed me to come to become in some ways who I am now. I, I couldn't just rely on my mom to handle things. I couldn't just rely on my mom to be the the strong voice, to be the funny one, to be the one that was going to hold me down. Now I had to resource myself with community and also resource myself by growing into the unknown. How much funnier could I be? (laughs) Because my mom was really funny. And how much stronger could I be? And you know, how much more of a powerhouse or an icon or a whatever artist or, 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 or whatever. But her loss, right? That shattering also breaks the mold and the paradigm and allows for us to if we really want to take the opportunity to kind of grow into that opportunity, it allows us to maybe see things differently. You know what also grief does? It wakes us up to life. I mean, I'm sure there was a part of how I was living. I was just teaching Pilates. I was handling things at home and the family. And Soon after she died, a year after, I went I went back to school because I was like, uh, again, F this. Why am I spending all this time making sure that other women have, you know, like tight asses? That I mean, it's great. I really did love doing it. But I'm going to be incredibly honest with you. That was the B plan. That was not the A plan. And yet I was doing it for 15 years. I was asleep to some of my life. And my mom's death woke me up. And it it made me ask the hard questions. And so grief forces us to wake up and to feel our aliveness and have and ask the hard questions. And hopefully, if you are, I wouldn't say struggling, but you're in a relationship, an intense relationship with faith, hopefully you're asking those questions there too. And so, again, you get to be angry, you get to challenge, you you get to ask the hard questions. And it, it what I'm saying is that those two experiences of loss for my for me and grief, it it challenged me to to sit in that unknown and in that unknown space where the only thing that has maybe a visual of what's going to come next is your spirit that's where trust is grown. When I'm finally awake and I'm like, oh crap, this is, this is what's happening. This is where I'm at. And I, and I'm no longer sleepwalking through parts of my life. And who's going to guide me? What do I do? And this is where that opportunity for a certain level of faith, and it doesn't have to be big, but something needs, a little, as they say, that seed needs to be there. And it's an opportunity for you to grow it. Now, while I was growing my faith, I will say, and I shared this uh, when I was talking to the episode, again, that'll come later, uh, talking to my best friends. Uh, my friend invited me to go um, to a Mama Gina event. And from that event, I signed up for her her bigger kind of weekend. And it was on that very first weekend in New York for this three, three weekend consecutive weekend event that I decided that I needed to get divorced. And it was in a community of sisterhood. It was in a community of of pleasure. It was in a community of playfulness. It was in a community of, of sensuality and sexuality. 
And it was this, this exploration of, of how do women in sisterhood come together to reclaim their bodies. And I needed to find and feel that sense of community and find and feel that sense of reclamation for myself so that my body could tell me that this was over. And so that I could trust, come to this place of deep trust and knowing that I would be okay if I followed those signals. And so my faith was there, but I it also allowed for me to go way, <laughs> way over here in this other place. I mean, I also talked to psychics, right? I have one I talk to a couple of times a year because this is who I am. And I also talk to God, right? And I don't talk to crystals, but I certainly hold them in my hands when I meditate. Like I am trying to always find answers. I'm always trying to be curious about how from how to receive those answers. And you, what I've been always encouraging anyone that I talk to is that you get answers too. You just have to figure out how those answers come to you. So sometimes for me, they come to talking to someone. Sometimes they come from meditation. Sometimes they come from prayer, from talking to God. Sometimes they, they come from journaling. Sometimes they come from talking to friends. I'm out here, people. <laughs> so partly like I'm, I'm, I'm sharing all of this because I, I, I wanted you to also know maybe the depth and the the variety of ways that I access spirituality or I access faith or I access knowing so that, again, that you have permission, not that you have to get permission from me, but that um, I think in, in this work that I'm doing here on this podcast in life that like, that I, I want to, to model permission giving in a way that allows for you to come back home to who you are. And I think what I'm sharing is that for me, faith is home, but I get to also leave home and I get to also see the world, whatever that means. And I get to go explore and then bring that information back and say, what does this feel like? What does this sound like? Does this feel true? Does this feel, does this resonate with me? So the law, those losses, and there's been others since I, I think there's a part of my life um, that deals with loss and deals with death and, and, I wouldn't say a constant way or consistent, but meaning like, you know, that I, I work with clients who are, who are dealing with loss and grief. Um, I, I think there's a comfort level that I have uh, with that work and with holding space for that. So I think that's why it can show up in a variety of ways. It has personally in my life, but also with people close to me. And so I think that's another reason why um, I want to share this on on this day, uh, which again to me symbolizes a certain level of grace and it symbolizes forgiveness, which is I think so important when we're dealing with grief. We desire so much grace when we are dealing with and struggling with loss. That we we desire a certain level of 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 holding of being nurtured we desire a deep level a deep level of 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 care that requires i want to say forgiveness in the sense that it's it's a care that is lacking judgment so when we're talking about this, the, the forgiveness where there is a, a removal or like there, like the judgment is really kind of taken off the table. It's because again, as we're showing up in this place of, of grief, right here, I am railing at the sky that I don't want to be judged in that moment for me 
railing, for me deciding I'm going to do whatever, for me deciding I'm going to be uh, angry or belligerent or whatever the things that, that we choose to do to sometimes get out of our grief, right? This is where drugs or alcohol or sex or all kinds of things, right? Behaviors that that we pick up and we do as humans because we, again, I think in some ways we are challenging. We are challenging something or someone. So I believe in these moments when we are trying to numb ourselves of our feelings or destroy ourselves, we are destroying ourselves in relation to our belief, in relation to our faith. Because there's a part of us that really believes something is watching us in that moment. As I destroy and try to destroy or numb out this human form, I'm doing that because I believe there is something that actually cares about me doing that and not just another human. So again, part of this opportunity for you to strengthen your faith is to recognize that your behavior is in opposition to the faith you already have, to the belief that something already exists that you are also pissed off at. And if you can recognize that there is a entity, a thought, a belief that is out there that you are pushing up against, then it also is something that you can draw closer to. Two sides, right, of the same coin or paradigm, right? Just something to consider. So as I got angry and I got mad, I also felt heard. I felt heard in my anger. I felt seen in my anger. And in those moments when I went to church and maybe the message or the song resonated with me and I felt it deeply in my heart, I was like, oh yeah, I'm not alone. This still sucks. I'm still mad. (laughs) I'm still pissed off. But I felt something bigger than myself. I felt some level of connection. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be, you know, that entity, maybe for you, it's connection to those around you. Maybe it's, it's connection from touch or from love or just from words of, of, of condolences. So know that you're just question, stay curious about your behavior and what is it for? Who am I doing this for? Who do I wish would respond to what I'm doing? And If it's something bigger, if it's some level of spirit, then know there is an opportunity there. And then the last one is to, as I I think I, I hit on it a little bit before, is to, when you can, stop coming from this place of lack. Now, loss is loss, right? Something is gone. But In that loss, there is space for you to build something else, for me to build a new relationship with my mom, for me to build a new relationship with her spirit, with her memory, for me to build uh, a new relationship with her and her grandkids, for me to build a new relationship with my ex, for me to literally build a new life. Instead of me gripping the house and the school or, you know, the furniture or the art or the money, whatever it is that any of us could be gripping, or even just the relationship, instead of me gripping those things because I, I suffer from a lack of imagination, What if I release my grip and invite in what is for me? Why am I holding on to something that is no longer for me? Even, and this is hard to say, but even my mom. If her presence, her body is no longer for me, to have in my life in that way 
why am I gripping onto, I can't get that back. But what I can do is get a new relationship with her. So yes, I have to grieve. This is not about skipping any steps around grief. Anger, sadness, mourning, loss, and grief is forever. It is forever. Stop this idea that it's going to end in two weeks and I'm back to work. No. I grieve my mom. It's been over 10 years. Still feel her loss. Do I feel it every day? No, I don't. Because I'm filled with the memory of the joy that I had with her. I'm feel I'm filled with, I can't say that word right. <laughs> I'm filled <laughs> with sharing her with my kids and how awesome. You know, I don't say it all the time, but every once in a while, I I just tell them, I'm like, my mom would be so delighted by you. And I really believe she's around us. She, she sees it anyway. But I want them to know, it's like, my mom would have thought you two are so funny. My mom would have loved to have cuddled you and held you and laughed with you and at you. And it's all true. And why do I know that that's true? Because I knew my mom because I had an opportunity to know her for however long I got her. And so I get to transform this relationship. So when I let go of trying to hold on to the body, I got to have a new version of my mom. When I let go of the marriage, I got to build a new life. I would not be doing this, literally this, right now if I was in my old life. No way. There's no possible way. Absolutely not. And take that however you want to take it. But the life that I have for those who know me, who know me, who've been in my home, who've been in my life, I love my life. And I built this. I built this while in relationship and following spirit, following those little hits that said, go to Mama Gina or go to this apartment or go to that job, or leave that job, or go on that date, or leave that date, (laughs) or go. (laughs) I am constantly working to strengthen my relationship to faith, to trust, to spirit. That's the only way that I have been the kind of risk taker that you know me to be, for those who know me, and for those who are going to get to know me. This right here, this moment, me talking on this, even sharing what I've already shared today is me being a risk taker. And partly it's also because, and I'm going to share, I had a really profound conversation with one of my clients who was so tender and honest and beautiful with me sharing her response. to one of the, to the podcast with my brother. And, and it allowed for me to have this other deeper level of discussion. And I thought I should share this, some of the stuff that came up for me in that conversation. And that was incredibly brave for that particular person to, to talk to me about their response. And so I'm honoring that bravery by being brave here again and sharing with you my truth of who I'm trying to be, who I am now. And that person may not be here next year. Yay. (laughs) Right? Because if you knew me, was it four years ago? I was married. I was a very different person. And so when I released my grip of that and I got to grieve and I said, all right, I'm in the unknown. Okay, what do I do now? I need to buy a new set, a new sofa (laughs) because the old one doesn't fit into my tiny apartment. Right? Stepping into your relationship with your beliefs. And coming to it from not a place of lack, this is number three, but from a place of abundance. Because in my grief, I also recognized, wow, 
I have these beautiful children that love me. Wow, I have these incredible relationships with these friendships that have lasted decades. How lucky am I? Wow, I'm able to at least get into an apartment and start my life over. I have a job with coworkers that rose up to meet me in my grief. I found the most perfect job that would hold me in my grief. Wow, right? Like we get to say, wow, even as we're mourning, even as we are in places of loss. And while I was in those places, there was forgiveness and there was grace towards me and out from me, right? I had to offer that in the ending of my relationship. And I also received it. And so I'm sharing these three as an opportunity to look at and calibrate to and invite the the beauty of, of spirit, the beauty of relationship, and relationship to grief, and the relationship to faith, and the relationship to spirit on this most beautiful day that, again, really symbolizes the birth of so many of those things, right? That for those who do subscribe to this, to me, part of part of the celebration of this day and of this birth is the idea that I now get to have a one-to-one relationship with faith, that there is no longer this organization, this church, and it's necessary, don't get me wrong, but there's no longer this hierarchy of people between me and my faith. That's what this birth, this day, also symbolizes that now I get to have my own relationship one-to-one with that belief. And because it's one-to-one and I get to now directly go to them, I can directly go to them and say, you suck. (laughs) Like I, and I have said, I don't may probably that I hate you. I'm mad at you. You, this is the worst. You're terrible. I don't want to believe in you anymore. And then I also said, I'm sorry. (laughs) That was kind of mean, (laughs) but I'm still mad. And then there's moments where I get to say I'm grateful. And there's moments I get to say, is this okay that I do this? And there's moments where I get to say, give me everything that I want. I want to be spoiled. Because you've already ruined my life taking all the things from me that I, that I held dear. I get to say all the things. And so I, I invite you in all of my antics today. <laughs> I invite you to create that type of love and holding with the things that you believe in. And I, I, I invite you to strengthen the relationship with not only all the people that you hold dear, but with, but with the internal spirit that is always with you. So happy holidays and Merry Christmas. And I'm wishing you all such a beautiful day. And you'll hear from me next week. And happy New Year's when we <laughs> when I'll do whatever that episode ends up being. Um, a start to your a start to your new year. Anyway, thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. As always, please share, comment, and like so we can grow our community and bring more love to those you love. Great reviews mean a great deal to our work. So take a few minutes and write us a love letter today. Our hearts appreciate every word. Tune in next week for another episode.